Hey, happy Friday. This week, Seagate reinvented the hard drive. Lenovo basically announced that they're going to be making a handheld game console running SteamOS, and TP-Link might get banned in the US. Welcome to the Friday Checkout. <music> This video was sponsored by Nebula. Okay, for my first story of the week, Seagate has new hard drive tech that uses nanophotonic lasers, quantum antennas, and heat, and it's actually real and launching now. They call this HAMR, or Heat Assisted Magnetic Recording, and they've been working at this for many years. The drives apparently use up to 95% of the same internals as the other ones do, except that they store data by using nanophotonic lasers to heat small areas of the disk, which heat and cool almost instantaneously, in less than 2 nanoseconds. Doing this avoids the usual magnetic field instability issues, and this atomic-level quantum play should allow for space and energy savings. Those space savings allowed Seagate to cram 3 terabytes of storage onto a single platter, which is already double what they could do before, and they claim that they have a roadmap for 4 to 5 terabytes in the future too. A huge deal for data centers especially, and their first launch is going to be a 32 terabyte unit. The product page for this first drive is already live right now, and Tom's Hardware found that Seagate claimed that it had quote, successfully completed qualification testing for these drives with several customers and that it will start shipping to an unnamed cloud provider in the coming weeks. Competitors like Western Digital launched their own 32 terabyte hard drives using a competing technology, while Toshiba has demonstrated yet another alternative for beyond 30 terabytes too. Either way, hard drives that use lasers and quantum tech are now real, so you never have to delete a cat picture again. Hallelujah! Okay, and for my second story of the week, we got confirmation that Valve will be Lenovo's special guest at a just-announced gaming handheld event at CES. In short, Lenovo is going to announce the successor of the Legion Go handheld, and while the first generation was running Windows, there's a chance that the second generation might run SteamOS. We've already heard that Valve was pushing for SteamOS to become a real open operating system that is available for multiple hardware vendors, and this might be our first tangible sign of that actually happening. If true, this could be pretty cool on its own, but it could also potentially make gaming on Linux more of a thing, because SteamOS is Linux-based, and if that becomes kind of the industry standard for handheld gaming, then a lot of game developers might optimize their games for that, and then we might get Linux gaming everywhere. Cool. But wait, Microsoft's VP of Next Generation Xbox will also attend, according to the same report, which makes things a little bit more confusing. We've also heard that Microsoft is working on a sort of Xbox launcher for Windows handhelds, so maybe it's something related to that, and there are hints that Lenovo will actually launch two versions of the console, one with Windows and one with SteamOS. Who knows? Anyway, pretty exciting time for gamers, and Tristan will be at CES, so we'll try to get you some coverage. Okay, and for my third story of the week, we might get a potential ban on a TP-Link. Found that in China, TP-Link makes routers that are really popular in both US homes and businesses, where the company now has an estimated 65% market share. That is up from 20% in 2019, which is pretty crazy. But the Wall Street Journal reported that multiple US departments are considering a ban in the US on the company, and that they've opened probes into TP-Link. The claim isn't that TP-Link itself is necessarily doing something evil intentionally, but rather that TP-Link devices often have security flaws to an unusual degree, and that those often don't get fixed quick enough, and even when they do, the updates don't flow to customers in a timely fashion, leading to many cybersecurity issues. Microsoft even showed some evidence that TP-Link devices were used as botnets by state-sponsored Chinese hackers, though I'm sure that state-sponsored hackers from all competent countries are enjoying outdated routers as well. Some kind of ban could happen until 2025 already, and apparently Taiwan has already banned TP-Link routers from government and educational institutions. Also previously, a committee said that, quote, TP-Link products are also found on US military bases, with the Army and the Air Force Exchange and the Navy Exchange selling these devices to members of the military and their families. So yeah, things are a little tricky. And one problem is that people tend to really like TP-Link products, as the devices often win awards, so a ban might not end up being very popular. Okay, and as for our release monitor, we'll start with NVIDIA announcing a $249 Jetson Orion Nano Super, a terribly named product, which offers a bunch of performance for AI hobbyists to power their own large language models, to build AI agents, and to deploy AI-based robots. Not bad. Then, in Quirky Ideas, Elevation Lab announced the Time Capsule, which is a housing that extends your AirTag's battery life to up to 10 years using two AA batteries. It also only costs like $20, so this is kind of fun. And also this week, the Framework Laptop 16 just got a modular gadget that enables quadruple SSDs. It's called the Dual M.2 adapter, and it's on sale right now. 
And meanwhile, on the expensive end of the spectrum, Blackmagic announced that you can now buy their immersive camera that was designed to shoot stuff for the Apple Vision Pro. And all of this only costs $29,995, so it's quite a steal. But hey, if that's too cheap for you, then the world's first transparent OLED TV just went up for sale as well, which is a 77-inch LG Signature OLED T for just $59,999. I gotta say, having that in the living room would be a pretty big flex. And a rather strange flex would be Casio's new, very over-the-top G-Shock watch that is not only made from titanium and a bunch of other fancy stuff, but also comes with Bluetooth and unlimited running time thanks to solar charging, all for just 8,000 euros. Links to the release monitor are of course down below, and I'm very sad that I couldn't use affiliate links for a $60,000 TV or a $30,000 camera or an $8,000 watch, because apparently, sadly, those are not on Amazon. And I'm sure you ballers would have bought them, but there we go. Okay, and as for the brief, we start with Apple reportedly giving up on creating an iPhone hardware subscription service. The team was disbanded, and so there's no iPhone subscriptions from Apple to you. Next, Evan Blass leaked this Italian marketing image, confirming the 22nd of January date for Unpacked, and also that there'll be four devices in the Galaxy S25 series, hence the graphic showing four corners. There's the usual three models, plus the slim, which is expected to come at a later date. And then Evan also leaked that the world's first laptop with a rollable display will come from Lenovo at CES. I love that Lenovo always just says yes to every crazy device form factor out there. And next, the EU has signed a deal for the Iris Squared, a tiny Starlink rival intended for governments, the military, and also some private users. Unlike Starlink, which is widely available already, this is only scheduled for 2030 and only with 290 satellites, but it might give Europe some much-needed autonomy. And moving on, Intel has announced that it has now fixed four out of the five root causes of performance issues for its Arrow Lake chips. Some of these are claimed to bring as much as up to 30% performance improvements, so let's see if these actually make a difference. But like, maybe next time Intel should just release their CPUs when they're ready. There's a crazy idea. Anyway, and next, Waymo's robo-taxis are coming to Tokyo in 2025, making Japan their first country outside of the US. Waymo really seems to be on a roll right now. But meanwhile, not on a roll is Motorola, whose phones face a US market ban owing to a patent dispute between their parent company, Lenovo, and Ericsson over 5G. Motorola already had another set of patent issues in Germany, so I bet that they're really unhappy about this. And early next year, on the 10th of January, the Supreme Court will hear TikTok's challenge to the US law, which could ban it just nine days later. That's a pretty tight deadline, though TikTok's CEO is personally meeting with Trump this week, so the charm offensive is happening big time now. All right, and I have two updates to share with you for the end of the year. First, we'll not have a regular episode of the Friday Checkout next week because there's not a whole lot of news to talk about around Christmas anyway. So instead, we're gonna be doing a live show, the first one ever on this channel. It's gonna be really exciting. We have a whole lot of things planned. Tristan will be here, potentially some uh, special guests as well. And we're gonna be taking listener questions. We're gonna be talking about what happened last year, what we expect to happen next year, and a whole lot more. Live show will be linked down in the description, streamed on YouTube. And if you use that link down below, you can get notified when that actually goes live. And second, we have gift cards for Nebula now, which are perfect for the holidays. You can gift a loved one or yourself access to the internet's best educational videos, including tons of Nebula originals, instead of buying just one more gizmo that will sit unused on some shelf. Originals include the fantastic documentary film Boomers by Tom Nicholas about how a generation came to dominate so much of modern life. It includes the newest season of Jetlag from Japan, which is just a ton of fun and more. I also do Nebula exclusive Q&A sessions at the end of every Friday checkout video, which people really seem to like. Oh, and your gift will also help us make better and more content for you because that's our simple business model. You get a subscription and we make stuff for you. No ads, no shady trackers, nothing. My link also brings the cost down to just $36 a year with an annual plan, which is down from $60 with a generic link. Plus, it also lets Nebula know that I sent you, so be sure to use that in the description or scan the QR code on screen now. And of course, the lifetime membership is always there for people who just hate subscriptions. Happy holidays. I hope you find some fantastic videos over on Nebula, and I'll see you next Friday.